بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رسول الله وعلى اله وصحبه ومن والاه اللهم لا علم لنا الا ما علمتنا انك انت العليم الحكيم اللهم وتب علينا انك انت التواب الرحيم سبحانك لا نحصي ثناء عليك انت كما اثنيت على نفسك انت المقدم وانت المؤخر وانت على كل شيء قدير in the name of Allah سبحانه وتعالى the most compassionate the most merciful all praise and thanks are due to him and peace and blessings be upon his beloved prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم he who is guided by the will of Allah no one can misguide him and he who is misguided no one can guide him except Allah سبحانه وتعالى السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته زاكم الله خير for coming and inshallah I think we will sit about 35 minutes 40 minutes maximum as always, I pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help me to be of some help for you. What we are doing now, Habaybi, uh, mashaAllah, Allah ya Rabbi kirimkum, wisaidkum, wisaidkum al khair. You never know how you might be benefiting from what we are saying. Now, uh, today, inshaAllah, the title of my topic, and I need your participation with that. But before I start, my title, how many verses do you need to change your life? How many verses do you need to change your life? You know the most important thing for me, <laughs> sittings, huh? I always lose my control if anyone moves or speaks or try to do anything. In case, please, in case, you need to discuss anything with your brother. I have no problem. You just leave the place, go outside, finish whatever you want, come again. Don't speak with anyone while I'm talking. Don't try to look to him because I lose my concentration. I'm a very visual person. Deal? Okay? And do your best, please. Please don't, don't play with your cell phone. If there is something urgent, I have no problem. Just leave, finish, come, okay? No problem at all. You can leave smoothly, finish whatever, then come. But don't do any kind of action when I'm speaking because I need to convey a message. You know, sometimes I see you once or twice a month or once every three weeks, let's say. So I do my best to convey a message. Now, the gap between you and me is about 40 years. I'm, I'm 56 now. Your average is 13, 14, 15. Yani, more or less, there's about 40 years between you and me, okay? So, what I need from you, Habaybi, mashallah, Allah yahfadkum, may Allah descend his mercy upon everyone of you. Do your best to try to take what we are telling you, not just as information. It's a core experience. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you know, exposed us to many experiences. So, when we give you this experience, it might save your time. Sometimes one incident, you might benefit from me, from Amma Yasser, Dr. Yasser, from Sheikh Abdul Aziz, from anyone, could save 10 years maybe of experience for you. Right, let's start. What's the title? The title is, how many verses do you need to change your life? Now, in this place, I mentioned many months ago a story. This story is not what I need today, but I need to repeat the story now so that I want to build on this story. In case if you hear this story from me before, Alhamdulillah, it will be a repetition and it will fix the information. If this is your first time for the story, please focus because it's not the story that I need, but the story is part of what I need, okay? Now, I, how many of you hear the story of Richard Varley from me? One, two, three, subhanAllah, it was good. Three out of about maybe 35, 40, which means less than 15%, which is good. Good. Right. Focus on the story. And I my message on it. Okay? The story basically, it talks about someone who is still alive now. His name is Richard had an amazing, beautiful experience about 34 or 40 years ago. In 1979, 1980, 81, 82, within these four years, this experience happened with Richard Varley. Richard Varley was a colonel in the British police, in the special department of anti-terrorism. 
40 years ago, uh, someone from Indian origins, he used to be a Muslim, but he left Islam. This person's name is Salman Rushdie. Salman Rushdie wrote a book more than 40 years ago. He was making fun of Islam, attacking Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu At that time, unfortunately, the British government, the British Queen, they decided to support this piece of work, even though it was insulting, Islamophobic, many mistakes, big lies, hate speech, yet it was supported by the British government. So Muslims at that time in London, they were very angry. So they went to the streets, you know, in rallies and marches just to demonstrate against how come you are talking about, you know, this kind of mutual respect and you allow such a filthy, dirty piece of work attacking Muslims to be published at that time. So Richard Varley was asked to take care not to allow any kind of troubles to happen in the streets while Muslims were, you know, demonstrating in the streets 40 years ago in London. Now I'm quoting him, he's still alive. And what I'm telling you now, you can go to YouTube, just write Richard Varley. The title of his interview was Three Verses Changed My Life. This is his talk, okay? My talk, how many verses you need to change your life. I will go as a colonel at the people in the street. He said, of people, they are Muslims, they have an issue, they will be demonstrating in the streets. At that time, he said, I had no idea whatever about who is a Muslim or who a Muslim could be. So I decided to read something about Islam and Muslim. I, I asked the people around me, how can I read about Muslims? How can I know something about Islam? He was guided to buy a book of, sorry, a copy of the Quran. See what happened, subhanAllah. He said, my major, he finished his bachelor degree, degree in two majors. His first major was in biology. His second major was in physics. He said, I started reading the, this copy of the holy book of Muslims for him. He was not a Muslim. I, I don't know he was an atheist or a Christian. I had no idea. So he said, I started reading the history. No idea about Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. No idea about Sunnah. No idea about Quran at all. The only thing he started with is just English copy of the translation of the meaning of the Quran. Okay? So he said, start reading. So I came across the following verse. Maybe, how many of you understand Arabic? When I, when I say the ayah in Arabic, you will be able to under realize it. Just raise up your hand, please, Arabic. Okay, bye. He came أَوَلَمْ يَرَى الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا أَنَّ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضَ كانت رتقا ففتقناهما وجعلنا من الماء كل شيء حي. This ayah means in English, have not the non-believers witnessed or seen that heavens and earth, they were one mass and we split them into pieces. He said, this is exactly what we talk about himself. No, in the field of science as the Big Bang Theory. One mass split into pieces. He said, how come this book, which is supposed to be revealed 1400 plus years ago by an Arab desert man, is talking about something just recently we discovered and we call it in a scientific terminology as big bang. He said, I, I, I was not able to realize what a comment. It just clicked something in his mind. He kept reading. Are you with me? What was his two majors? Physics and Sorry, I, I made a mistake, not biology, geology, sorry, sorry. It's geology. I, I said biology, huh? Okay, it's geology and physics. So, this is not 
my goal not to narrate this story because I did narrate it before. I need something to build on this story. So for as a geology and physics to majors, he said, I, the first area that clicked in his mind or pushed him to rethink about how, how come this book, because for non-Muslims, for Europeans, for hundreds of years, Muhammad was not a prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa They did not believe in him. For many of them, it was spread against him a lie that he is a false prophet. He was just a genuine, clever, powerful Arab leader who was trying so that he can achieve some kind of prestige. Okay? So how come? Anyway, he continues, he continued his reading. He came across Qawlullah Ta'ala in Arabic. The ayah says, وَالسَّمَاءَ بَنَيْنَاهَا بِأَيْدٍ وَإِنَّا لَمُوسِعُونَ Allah in this ayah says literally, We have built the universe by our might and we are still expanding it. Focus. وَإِنَّا Lamusirun. This is what? Present continuous. We have built the universe and we are still what? Expanding. He stopped, he said, Wait, <laughs> I have just studied physics. And you know, any student of physics knows that you know the telescope of Hubble. Richard Hubble or something Hubble, you know, just 100 or 110 years ago, maximum, he discovered that the universe is expanding. You can years later you said something. The universe is expanding. Just one. Ayah is talking about the expansion 1450 years ago. Put another tick. He said, then I continued reading. He came across the third ayah. Do you remember what was the title of his interview? Three verses changed my life. It's his. He said, then I came across Allah Ta'ala. وجعلنا الأرض مهادا in the context of showing his bounties how he has favored us on earth that created the earth he paved it مهادا Literally, that we have, this is the majestic we, دون العظمة, okay? وجعلنا والجبال is saying that I have created the mountains as widges and pigs. What did? You know what it is? You dig 90% of inside the earth and you keep just the last the head to fix describing mountains like widges which fix the tent. Now as uh, someone who has studied geology as his major, now he was between 1997 and 1981-82 you know it took him two three years reading because it's a, it's a big issue for him so imagine he said we have just discovered in late 60s he's talking in late or the late what 60s which is about 20 years ago just he say he says we have just 60s that if you have a cross section of earth, imagine, sorry, this is the surface of earth. 
if you have the mountain physically now it's known in geology and in the ice mounts the icebergs as well the same thing if this is what you witness underneath and this is the surface of the ocean or the surface of earth if this is the amount of the mountain that you witness another 90 percent of it it goes inside the earth cross section it's like when you come and have a that everything inside you have the layers of earth you know he said we have just discovered late 60s if we have a cross section that the majority of the size of the mountain it goes years ago how come the quran is talking about al jibala outada then then he said came to a conclusion that for this book to be you know what does it mean i will repeat but for those who came late the title of our gathering today is how many verses do you need to change your life i'm quoting a story which is the introduction of my talk now in this story richard varley after coming across the three the third one we have made mountains like ridges so from physical and geological point of view he said we have just discovered this now 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 he came with the following conclusion he said this book is impossible to be it's impossible for a human being to know this knowledge 1400 years ago we have we have just discovered this in what we call science so he said is revealed by god and he became a muslim and he founded 40 years ago the first like uh, society like the msas in university you have the uh, uh, muslim society you know the msas he did the first time in the history of the British police at that time for Muslims the officers the police officers who are Muslims anyway so I became a Muslim the story is finished now my point is not the story the story is the introduction the title of my talk is how many verses you need <laughs> let's come to my message now Richard Varley was not in need to more than three verses to change his life from a non-muslim to a muslim <laughs> and the time you have to change your life i will make a pause before explaining in specific what do i mean by my question the word verse in arabic is what Ayah. The, man, the word verse in English is not the exact proper translation for the word ayah because ayah in Arabic is much, much. And it's your name, mashallah. <laughs> the word in Arabic is much more rich than the translation verse because verse is used like when we say the poetic verse, Beit Shir. <laughs> Okay? And means the sign. So when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speak, speaks about his ayah, which means the literal words that we recite. No. It means indications that show the greatness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In Arabic. Ayah do you need to change your life by this I'm not talking about just Quranic verses or Quranic ayat I'm talking about the general meaning of ayah which means how many sign and how many message 
How many ayah do you need from Allah to change your life? This is my, my question to our gathering. But what do I mean by this question? Now Richard Varley was a non-Muslim because of three Quranic ayah. For me, I receive Quranic ayah. Another messages from Allah. Charlie was a non-believer, a non-Muslim. For you, you are a believer, necessarily practicing Muslims. True or false? Many of us have the status that we are not practicing of the practice of Islam. Now, how many verse do I need? How many ayah? How many message? How many alama? How many sign do I need from Allah to change my life from practicing Muslim to a practicing Muslim, or from a weak practicing Muslim to a good Muslim? Is it clear? Depending on that, I will send this message now. Or let me ask, that depending on this understanding, when I mean that Allah sends alamat, ayat, messages to us, to wake us up, what do you understand from my words? How can Allah send me ayah to bring me back to be a part of, like what? On the same page, you understand what do I mean by ayah? Then, how? Mashallah, yes. I was going to say that, but also, other than like the verses, because there are Quranic verses, but sometimes you hear them and you're like, again, like he said, it's a recent discovery that you just heard about, and you're like, that's so crazy that it said that. How? It reinforces that belief, it might bring you back. Mashallah, re what? Reinforce. Reassure. Because sometimes. I'm a Muslim, but certainly having this very strong faith. <laughs> so when I know it, after a knowledge, it's my reinforce or reassure, okay? Or re empower. You need to add? I was just going to say, like, sometimes you send like, people into your life for that reason, or send specific people into your life for that reason. Excellent, yes. This is true. This is what I'm talking. How many ayah, alama, message, okay? Indication, sign, problem, hardship will happen. Maryam, yeah. Opportunity. How many people, when they were poor, they were crying in their dua, Ya Allah, Ya Allah, give me good, good rizq because I want to donate for poor and needy and orphans. But when he became multimillionaire, Hello! Excuse me? Hello! To prove my previous claims! Yeah? Ya Allah! Ya Allah, give me a nice wife, give me a nice husband. Ya Allah, I want to bring up my children, to all of them to be Hafad Quran and to give them to the masjid, to bring them to the masjid. <laughs> when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave him what he was dreaming or she was dreaming, the most important thing for them is what? How to speak languages, how to travel, how to be nice and cool Muslims, okay? Jama'at, all Allah, you know all Allah? What about Islam, Sheikh? <laughs> what about Masjid? What about the Quran? No, 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 no. The most important thing, he must be speak English and French and other languages. But Quran comes later. But you were crying to do this opportunity. But what else of ayat and alamat? Yes. Huh? How a good friend will be an ayah from Allah to bring me back to him? Yes, yes. Reminds you. But what else, Shabab? Yani five answers from the sisters. What about you? How could it be a alama, ayah, sign, message, reminder from Allah for you to bring you back? For Richard Varley, 
he was not in need to more than reading the copy of the Quran just once, three verses, three ayat, three scientific information pushed him to rethink from being a non-believer to be a believer. What about you? How could, could it be that Allah is sending messages to you? Alamat ayat. Because our title is, how many ayah, how many verses do you need to change your life? If you are a practicing Muslim, to be better. Not a practicing, to be a practicing. But I'm assuming, alhamdulillah, none of you is a non-believer. Sah? None of you is a non-believer. True or false? True. Huh? <laughs> the negation of the negation. Nafi nafi means... Affirmation, if bad, yani. Yani, alhamdulillah, inshallah, all of you are believers, I hope, hopefully. Hopefully? Believers? Believers? <laughs> yes, Ramduh. Khaliqo ma'i, shabab. Shabab, just 15 minutes, we'll finish, inshallah. Please, jazakum Allah khair. Ramduh, tadam. You say you're going to pray, and you hear an adhan, maybe you're in a class, maybe you're busy. Jazakum Allah Yes. Let me give you one of the most important things, but uh, hardship Who said the hardships? Okay. Look to the hardships. Let's analyze under that. Your sickness. You are very sick. You have a very strong body. MashaAllah, you enjoy your life out of a sudden, like the corona. Or out of a sudden you have a disease, you have a problem in your heart, you have a problem in your stomach, you have a severe headache, or whatever, you go to the hospital in a very difficult time. This is what? Ayah from Allah to you. This is a message. Message. Type. You were not sick, you became very sick, suffering from health problems. How could it be a message from Allah to help you to change your life? How sickness or health problems considered in our faith as a message from Allah to change my life? How? Yes, Reem? Iman. Allah, I always make the mistake. Malish. Okay. Iman, tafadali. Nisma, shabab. Please, please. Can you listen to the sister? Tafadali, Iman. From, from my angle, that's true. Allah is cleansing my sayyat. My question, how? Yes, will be a message and a alama from Allah to shake me, to bring me back. Yes. The end could be very near. Yani, when I'm healthy, wealthy, enjoying my full pleasures. Most likely I will not think, for example, about Salah. Maybe I will take it easy to go enjoy in haram places. I don't care where to go, what to see, what to speak, what, because I'm enjoying. I have the time, the health, the wealth, the time. Type. I'm in the hospital now. <laughs> Suffering from a severe pain. What could be the most important thing that will come to my mind if I'm suffering from a severe pain? Yes? Yes? But why? Why do you think when I'm suffering from a severe pain and I might, might, might be told that this could be your end? My what? Your end, brother. Brother, this could be your end. Yani imagine that the doctor told me you are suffering from a very difficult, for example, disease or whatever, and it could end your life. Could end my life means immediately my mind will think about what? <laughs> the angel of death. Meeting Allah. Standing before Allah. Defending my shortages or whatever immediately. But maybe two, three, four days I will be alhamdulillah fully covered. But this message, this ayah did what to me? Wake up! It's a wake up call. You get my point? Father Habibi, uh, you are uh, Yes. But speak loudly, please. That, that's true. This is another aspect. I'm in need now. I'm in a desperate need. Without a desperate need, and no one is able to help you. You will ask who? Allah. 
So by default, you will be remembering Allah. You will be calling Allah. You will be speaking with Allah. You will begging. You will begging Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This will be something for your benefit or against you. For your benefit. So sickness, illness, health problem was a ayah, alama, a message from Allah that pushed you back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Okay? But what else? I mean, uh, Maryam? Yeah. MashaAllah. Tab, yani subhanAllah, it was part of the examples. Now the people in Gaza, are they facing disasters or not? It's one of the biggest disasters. Maryam, how, how many you have lost from your extended family in Gaza? Maryam from Gaza, by the way. How many? More than 30. More than 30. Maybe they are. Now 40 or 50, Dr. Yasser, how many? More than 56. Dr. Yasser is the father of Maryam. Just to know, because that's why I'm asking him. 56. Time. Dr. Yasser, can you tell us how losing more than 50 of your relatives and families made you closer to Allah? Thank you, Maryam. You started, and I will finish with you that. Shaif? It made the life uh, uh, almost meaningless for us. MashaAllah. Jazakallahu khaira. Please focus on what he said. Clearly, clearly, in a simple word, made life meaningless. So don't fight for life. Don't have envy, hatred. Don't cause troubles with your mom and dad. Don't destroy your life for silly things. Meaningless. Very simple words. Zakallah khair, doctor. Barakallah fi. Because out of a sudden, they woke up and they lost 20. Few hours later, 30. Few days later, 50. Now about 60, just from talking about his family, just. So disasters, catastrophes, big, big, Disasters, they pushed you to rethink about how life is meaningless. So this is another what? Message, ayah, alama from Allah. So if, in case, in case, imagine if, alhamdulillah, I know that you do your best to perform the prayer. But imagine if I'm from this family. Just I woke up, I discovered that tens of my family, they passed away. Boom, all of them. Imagine that I know one of those 50 is my direct cousin and he was not praying. Please, let's reflect upon this. Let's imagine one of those 50, I know him and he's my cousin, he's in my age, okay? And he was always making fun of the prayer, he does not want to pray. Now, just a few hours ago, he passed away. What should be my thinking be focusing on? Please, can I have your answers? Imagine this. Yes. I have a very uh, disturbing example. Yeah. If I may say. Yeah. In Gaza right now, a lot of people are enjoying something and disturbed by something else from the dead. Many of them smells very bad smell of the bodies of the dead people after three, four days. Ya Allah. In their homes or wherever. Ya Allah. And very, a lot many others we receive daily, they smell musk from people who were killed. This gives us a sign, one of the signs. Wallahu alam, yeah. Yes, wallahu alam. Wallahu alam, yes. Subhanallah, subhanallah. Zakallah khair. So, type, what other lahdu catastrophes? Type, let's, let's speak about the possible daily life. Give you a simple example. A, f a close friend of yours very close he or she always doing his best to commit sins secretly is it possible is it possible some of your close friends they commit sins secretly i mean by secretly at least people in general and their parents they don't know but you know because you are a close friend is it possible yes it happens many of our close friends they do commit things and maybe they reveal this to us maybe they tell us maybe they whisper it to us so we know it Maybe we do our best to ask him, her, please be careful, don't do it, don't repeat it. Fear Allah, Allah gave you Allah, but they don't care. 
just out of a sudden you receive the message Azam Allahu Ajrakum your friend passed away by a car accident MashaAllah Zakum Allah Khair Shukran Habib Shukran Ahmad Zakum Allah Khair Sadarak Allah Fikum Shukran Zakum Allah Khair one, I wish if I can give uh, Arabic coffee to all of you, but it's impossible. So therefore, please wish me sahha wa hana wa afia wa ala gloobkum alf sahha, inshallah, okay? <laughs> all of you, bismillah. <coughs> MashaAllah. Fa, what I was saying, your close friend whom you know for sure that sometimes he might be committing sins secretly, Passed away in a car accident. Could this happen? Yeah. Any one of us, car accident. Crossing the road. Allah him. may Allah descend his mercy upon them. You know, that criminal in London, just more than 10 years ago, the one who smashed by his car deliberately, uh, the family in London, four. Four of them, father and mother and a son and daughter. He just, you know, I mean, no one expected, no one was expecting, they were just crossing, actually, they were not crossing the road. They were just walking by the side of the road. Someone came and boom, la ilaha illallah. May Allah accept them as shuhada. But how this destiny could happen to any one of us? So, catastrophe, sickness, car accident. But let's talk, because as I told you, when I sp speak about ayah or alama, from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, not necessarily just the big things. Tayyab. Is it possible to fail in the exam? Possible? Tayyab. How, who can give me an example how failure in an exam could be a great message from Allah? How? Yes, Ajud. I, uh, to humble yourself. But some people think they only achieve big bars always because of what? Zakallah khair. Because of their brains. IQ. I'm the cleverest. I'm the genius. I'm the cleverest. Alhamdulillah, very easy. Yeah, I'm studying. Uh, it's nothing. Uh, it's nothing. <laughs> I'm not like you. You, <laughs> you know, you, <laughs> you others people. You have to study. I don't study. I'm very clever. Okay, Tayyibullah. <laughs> Pam. Failed in the exam. What? Yes. It's as if, as if, because you know, somebody say, how Allah? Allah is benefiting me now. As if Allah is telling me, hey, hey. Know your place. Humble yourself. Be careful. Don't be arrogant. By this, it's a wake-up call. Another. It's another message. Another ayah. Another alama from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What else? Yes. Normal life. Subhanallah. I'm gonna convert, but yes. I heard many stories, for example, about sisters in the Arabic world. They are not wearing the hijab. They are good, nice, but they are refusing to wear the hijab because they do what? Keep postponing. Inshallah, I will do it. I will do it when I graduate from high school. I will do it after. And they passed away before even wearing the hijab. It happened. It happens. Yes, sister. Another example. Sorry, please, baby. Just a few minutes, we will finish. Please listen to the sister out of respect. Ah, yes. I kept saying, like, I'll do it after high school, I'll do it next Ramadan, stuff like that. And then I had my cousins come from Dubai to visit in the summer. And they're a lot younger than me. It's like little kids. And she was like, I have a personal question for you. Like, why are you not wearing the hijab? And I was like, if I don't have a, like an answer for a little girl, what answer am I going to have in front of Allah? MashaAllah, Zakum Makhir for sharing us with us. Please repeat it. 
if I don't, by the way, this is a message from Allah. Ah, oh, 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 yes, yes. Have you noticed? If I don't have an answer for a young girl, how can I have an answer to Allah? That's true. That's true. Exactly. This is a message. This is an ayah. This is exactly what I need. Jazakallah khair. Yani, it will be part of our conclusion. This is exactly what I need from our session. How many verses do I need to change my life? Time. Now, Jazakallah khair, sister. Uh, is there anyone who would like to add before I conclude and make just a quick conclusion for our session today? Any other example that can be classified as, or before I, I finish and conclude, have you heard about Cat Stephen or Yusuf Islam? Who knows Yusuf Islam or Kat? His original name is Cat Stephen, you know what? What do you know about him? Yes, he used to be a very famous singer in his time. His, 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 uh, his original name is Cat Stephen. He was very famous more than 40 years ago. Have you heard about the Beatles? Yes. You know, Cat Stephen, he's in the same level of the Beatles in their time. Yes. Very famous. Cat Stephen, to the best of my knowledge, he became a Muslim and he's starting uh, to, to do uh, some Islamic nasheeds, mashallah. His voice, Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad. Uh, when you go, you can search just his name, Cat Stevens, his Islamic songs. One of his first songs about 45 years ago, it was A is for Allah, Ba is for beginning of Bismillah, Ta is for Taqwa, something like that. He did it, but nothing like my voice, alhamdulillah, Akid. If I did it, you will stop listening to all Nasheed in your life. But now, why I need Cat Stephen? Cat Stephen, as I remember, because I read about his story, I think, maybe 30 years ago. If my memory is good still, the reason why he became a Muslim, look how Allah brings Hidayah guidance to you. Look, he was very rich, very famous, very well-known, very influencing celebrity in his time. So... He has a brother. His brother came as a tourist to Palestine 40, about 40 years ago. So he boots from one of the, this kind of small booths and shops of Palestinian brothers there. He boots a copy from the Quran as a souvenir. <laughs> not, not, not from religious point of view, as what? As a souvenir. <laughs> <laughs> Just as a gift, because you know, we went to uh, Holy Land and Palestine and those Arabs and Muslims and both of them, they are non-believers and they don't care. But subhanAllah, he decided to have a copy as a souvenir. <laughs> he gave it to Cat Stephen, the famous singer who does not care with anything on earth except fame, money, beauty, sound, dancing, drinking, all these things. He said, subhanAllah. I had the copy, I did not read anything in there, I just put it in the shelf. Once he was swimming, something happened to him, you know sometimes, you know, how many of you can swim? Do you know when you have, God forbid, the full stiff in your muscles, sometimes? It, alhamdulillah, I hope none of you face this. Sometimes, you know, there is a very strong stiff could happen to some of your muscles and your body will be freezed. <laughs> and you can't move your body in the water. So he faced something like this. He, was ab he started sinking, he was about to die. <laughs> now he was trying oh, 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 like this. He said, oh my Lord. Now immediately he started saying, yeah, my God. He knew that there is a God, but he does not accept any religion or follow any religion. He said, oh my Lord, if you keep me alive, I promise you that I will search for the truth to come to you. This is what was in his intention. And Allah saved him. The first thing he saw in his face after being rescued, it was the copy from the Quran himself. <laughs> he started reading the Quran and he became a Muslim. Look, subhanAllah, what pushed him to read the Quran, his promise. His promise came as a result of promising Allah to search for the truth when he was You know, yes, he was near, literally about to die 
when he was swimming. He was about to lose his life. So from one angle, it was a disaster. It was a sign. It was a alama. It was a message. It was a hardship. It was something difficult. It was something horrible. Horrible. But it led at the end to... He took the message. He received the message. Unfortunately, some people, they don't care. But let me just finish my examples with this simple, important example. Some people might ask the following question. But doctor, how many message we do receive from Allah during our lives? Who knows how many message do we receive? What is the number of messages that Allah will keep sending to us? Do you have an idea? How many messages? Yes, Jude? So many. So hundreds, thousands, tens. Uh -huh. Yes, Habib. What do you think? Thousands? But what do you think? Let, let me listen to all of you. What do you think? Yahya, uh, huh? Well, I'm not able to hear him. Please, please. Let me hear. How many? I'm saying uh, the Quran is uh, like a big message. We don't need any more than that yani, to believe in Allah. No, no, I'm not talking about believing. I'm talking about if I'm not practicing or falling in short, we have a proof now that Allah sends and keeps sending messages to us. A reminder. How many message in every single person's life will be received before khalas. Allah will <laughs> finish him. Yes, sister. Until you die. Yes, that's true. Keep sending. What do you think? Well, I think every single second that you're alive is a message. Even if it's not a big thing. That's true. A sickness or seeing something happen. Every second that you're alive, your body's moving. And yeah. Existing, there has to be something that made you that. That's way. true. Yet, I need to warn myself and brothers and sisters with the following. I always use this example. Let me just. Now, you are aware of this, I think. I think. I hope you are aware. Do you know? Oh, yes. What is this? Driving license. Do you know the concept of the points in the driving license? Look what does it mean. By default, when I have the full G, I have a number of points by default. Let's say 10 points. Please focus now. We'll finish by this. By default, by obtaining the license, I have what? 10, Ten points. Now, I'm asked to avoid committing what? Crimes. Mistakes. Okay? Such as? Speeding. Such as? Red. Red light, such as crossing while the flashing of the bus, <laughs> school bus, okay? Now, when I do commit a mistake, I lose what? Points. Points or points. It depends. So, let's imagine that I have 10 points. I did a mistake, speeding. They send me, you have lost one. How many still I have? Nine. I did another mistake. I lose another one. Eight remained. I did the third mistake. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Finito. You know finito? Khalas. But what does this mean? I can't drive anymore. Type. Let's come to our topic. What does it mean that the messages this is exactly what happened between us and Allah. Allah will keep sending me messages till khalas. Khalas, I took my full share. Do you know what happens next? Allah might apply on me the concept of idlal. Have you heard about this? Idlal? Yudillullah may yasha. Have you heard this or not? Yudillullah. Allah misguides. What? Yes, those people, after giving them tens and hundreds of messages, and they were, Ayyad Billah, what? Refused. They keep refusing, refusing, refusing. So Allah exposed me to sickness. I did not start praying. Allah pushed me to fail in the exam. I did not care. 
Allah sent me third message, fourth message. I lost a very dear person, second one, third one. Come to Allah. You yourself, you were in the same car. All of your colleagues passed away. You are the only one who was saved. Be careful, you could be next. I did not care. I kept on disrespecting my parents. Maybe I'm drinking alcohol. Maybe I'm swearing. Maybe I'm committing haram. Regardless, I'm doing something knowingly I'm committing. So Allah keeps sending, 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 sending. At a certain point, خلاص. خلاص. My points are finished. I might go to another law, which is idlal. Misguide me till I'm finished completely. Billah. So the core point of our message, what was the title of our gathering? How many verses? Do you need to change your life? Zakum Lakhir. I need to repeat again that really, Wallahi, from the bottom of my heart, I thank you for your discipline. You can't imagine how happy I am with the level of advancement comparing myself two, three years ago with the majority of you. When I used to come speaking, most of those in your age, they were, you know, chatting, speaking, playing with their uh, cell phones. Now the majority of you, you are listening in a very nice distant way. Jazakumullah khairan. Thank you very much. Barakallah fikum. May Allah let every single person of you be one of the great da'iyas and the great muslah. And you fix the life of the people and you be leaders in khair and goodness, inshallah. Jazakumullah khair. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Barakallah fikum. <laughs> Not to this degree. <laughs>